Facebook passage is live. <laughs> Good oh, afternoon oh. and welcome everybody. My name is Karen West. I'm the director of events at Book Passage where we have two locations, the San Francisco Ferry Building, which is all devoted to food. You would love it so much, Lorenzo. It's the cutest little postage stamp of a store and everything, oh. food and wine and, and procuring and foraging. And it's just a delight. And our other oh, store is in Porta Madera. And yeah. uh, I am so thrilled to be with you today, Lorenzo, because I know everybody knows you from your TV show, the Epicurious series, Four Levels, your infectious style, informal <laughs> approach, the way I feel like I'm hanging out with a friend and learning how to cook. I'm sitting in my kitchen, which I think is the best place in the whole house, always, where everybody yeah. gathers. And I know you have a posse in your kitchen. And uh, I am just, I just say exactly what the book says. Let's do this, folks. This book is so much fun. And we're going to get a taste of it today by spending this hour with you. So um, take it away, Lorenzo. <laughs> Hello, folks. How are you? Live from New York. <laughs> Let's do this, folks. <laughs> I apologize already. I don't know why it always happens. Anytime there's a camera on me, something happens. And so I apologize to you in advance. How is everybody? I hope everybody's doing great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today, lucky duckies that you are today, we're actually going to do two of my favorite egg rolls in the world. One was a staple egg roll that I grew up on because I never liked really veggie when I was teeny tiny. So they introduced it to me via egg rolls and it just was delicioso. And that's what we're going to do first. We're going to put together some spring vegetable egg rolls or veggie roly polies that are named in my book. <laughs> and uh, we're going to move over right after we do this while it's cooling in the fridge. We're then going to step into doing, oh, another favorite and something who is, if anybody out there loves meat and potatoes like I do, I'm a meat and potatoes guy. I'm making beef, Bubba's beef and potato egg rolls. That is for somebody who, you know, wants a little something more hearty in, in their stomach. And it's a great finger food for parties, get togethers, and it's just kind of just fun to me. Uh, you can have parties making these egg rolls, et cetera, et cetera. So, and so can, I, can I ask you a quick question? Because yeah. throughout the book, I love this so much. So I want to ask you right off, how do you name your recipes? Your <laughs> recipes are just so much fun in their name alone. It's like roly polies. I mean, how does this happen? That is a very good question. First of all, I was born goofy. <laughs> we are, I have a family of just, we're kind of funny. We kind of just live life, just making fun of day-to-day -day things and just laugh a lot. And so for me to name something, whenever I say stuff on four levels, it's never planned. So if I say this looks lovely jubbly, it just comes to my head. <laughs> when I, you know, if I say it's easy peasy, it's just how we talk. I always feel like it, I'm almost like a big kid that got left in the kitchen to kind of just <laughs> have some fun <laughs> and be a mad scientist in the kitchen. So the names of these recipes is really, it wasn't even thought of that long it just literally popped into my head and the ones that I thought of that weren't liked by my family they said try this too but in the end it's always a fun and very whimsical you know we're, that's life it's we're just laughing all the way you know just having fun with it so uh will, yeah. you, will you quickly tell the story of your first uh television show when you were a baby the first oh my goodness show. yeah it was I my, love that my, my first uh, experience on a cooking show is like uh, my big family's kitchen. <laughs> Basically, I come from an enormous family, as do most of us. But when we have get-togethers and you're little, it's tenfold. You think you are uh, in a sea of relatives. There might be just 20 people. There are 10 people there. But as a little one, and I was a Oompa Loompa. I was a little guy. <laughs> I, I was the baby for a long time so everybody kind of took care of me I was always handed off to somebody I was always carried by somebody else you know two minutes in they got tired of me or they had to do something they switch off 
and they would plop me down onto the counter and literally hand me a, a spoon and a spatula. And, <laughs> and I would just, yep, I mixed the air. I felt like I was involved and I was all smiles. And they found out that I was more comfortable watching them in the kitchen than if somebody was taking me out or watching cartoons or playing with the dogs outside. I just would rather see what they were doing. So, yeah. I love <laughs> oh, it. candy store. <laughs> I love it. Okay, well, let's cook. Let's cook with you. I want to. Okay. I have to tell you, I love my little setup here. This is like, this is not green screen, folks. This is real. This is real. Everybody thinks it's green screen. What I have here is a kind of a, a medium high to high skillet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically saute all my vegetables. And I always start with veggie oil. You can use your other oils. I love veggie oil. I think it's just the freshest. You can use some oil or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to do this. And next comes my favorite spice in the universe. It is RPF, red pepper flakes. I say it a lot on the show. But I absolutely love it, and I love to put it in the oil so it kind of infuses the oil, and it gets that hot, hot and spicy stuff going. And yes, I, I did not steal this from Fred Flintstone. They purchased it. My sister purchased this, and I love this thing. Don't you? Is that nice? It's beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful piece. <laughs> All right. So I thought it was about two tablespoons of oil, and you can always add more, so don't fret. I actually cut these in my in my recipe. It, it calls for, uh, it makes about 10 to 12 egg rolls. I kind of just did half of it. So we're just gonna do a portion. Let's start off with the onions. This is actually part of a Spanish onion. I say a whole Spanish onion. I use only a half here. Spanish onions are huge usually. What I'm gonna do here is I am going to saute this a little bit. I'm gonna kind of make it the TNT, what I call trans and translucent and tender. I have that. <laughs> I should make a shirt. TNT. But uh, do we have, to, do we have to worry about the oil being too hot? Do we have to worry about the temperature of our oil? Yeah, I can always tell. I always start with a medium temperature and then really crank the heat up. This this little portable uh, heater, uh, I have to crank it all the way up. But I can tell, uh, especially using this thicker type of metal pan, um, you can tell if it's too hot. You don't want it rip roaring hot. It's easier and best to bring the heat up and gradually get it to where you need it to be. Right here now, I can always tell right now, it's already nice and translucent. So I'm gonna move on to the other veggies. And what I have here is I carved this the other day. <laughs> <laughs> So it is going to be my carrots. I grated my carrots, actually. I use a grater to make it easier and it's nice and uniform. Because you want these kind of the same size. These are green beans. I cut them on a bias. You don't want anything poking out of the, uh, the egg rolls. And then I move on to my green cabbage. Isn't that pretty? You and I do it in ribbon cuts. You want ribbon cuts. That way, it's not too clunky whenever you roll them and nothing pokes through. And then we're gonna end up with a beautiful red cabbage, which I don't know why they call it red cabbage, because it's purple. Uh, but uh, we're gonna saute that as I take a I know you're a big knife guy. You're a big, you, you, you mentioned that knife technique was one of the first entries to your whole, you know, something that you like to do. Did you learn that from Jacques Pepin? Where did you learn oh, your life? Me. You read, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. As I, uh, first of all, let me real quick, as uh, I do talk about that, I did uh, cut up uh, a couple of um, garlic, minced garlic. So what it is with the, uh, the knife skill, I have every, I, no one ever taught me how to cut. I have to tell you, and everybody in my family knows this, I had food shows on since I was little. It wasn't cartoons, it wasn't sports, which I love both. I always had a food show on. Again, I think it brings me, myself back to, it made me feel like I was at home with my family. Yep. So 
I got a little teary. <laughs> I got a little sweaty and teary eyed talking about that, you guys. You got me. Was that planned? You guys are. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. You got me right in the, the heart. But no, I, but that is true. I uh I just practice, practice, practice. I I can actually, fun fact, if you cook something where I watch a show, I can literally cook the same thing right after. Oh. Like just watching it once. It's weird. I kind of get, I really get, it, it soaks into my brain. So my first job as an actor was because, hey, I, they were something, they needed a chef I could chop, but also talk via teleprompter. And I was in, working before, and of course, I had to give speeches. So I always use a teleprompter. So that is exactly what happened. I was able to chop and talk and cook at the same time, kind of like what I'm doing right now. <laughs> So it's uh it's quite interesting. So isn't that pretty? Can you see that? Beautiful. Yes. That beautiful? Beautiful. Right there and then. You know, it's funny. If you wanted, just you folks, it's not in the book, but if you want to just serve it like that, it's just so pretty. You could add uh, uh, fried, or, I'm sorry, sauteed shrimp in this. And that's oh. a meal already. A lot of times we also add ground ground beef into it just adds another beefy flavor uh, a porky flavor um, and it's nice the fat in it gives a nice flavor and you would just serve it like that and you, add, you could actually add broth and, and you can serve it right on rice so it's very versatile uh, this is kind of like the abc's of how i cook it's always vegetables all right so now i did not oh yeah yeah, yeah salt and pepper my sous chef is there on the ball. <laughs> she was going, hey, hey. <laughs> salt and pepper, of course. You must salt and pepper. I love this thing, has both. Okay, so, uh, goodness, these onions. So, um, in my book, I say shiitake mushrooms. I always bought shiitake mushrooms that were dehydrated just because they're always there in the Asian market. But our lovely, lovely, uh, grocery stores that we have today have fresh, beautiful shiitake mushrooms available in the grocery aisle in the fresh produce. And so I don't have to dehydrate it, just to chop it up, which I have. I love shiitake mushrooms. Now, if you can't find shiitake mushrooms, you can throw another mushroom, but boo, boo on you. <laughs> find shiitake mushrooms. Find some shiitake mushrooms. It is a special, special, earthy, nutty flavor. It's so lovely. Uh, we're actually going to now throw in a very, very important aromatic that I use in most everything. Green onions or scallions. Green onions and scallions are kind of the same thing. Uh, they're listed sometimes different in the grocery store. It's your spring onions that people think are scallions. Uh, Almost the same taste, the, the bulbs on the bottom are much bigger. They look like, uh, like baby, baby onions on the bottom. Okay, so basically I'm just feeding through the scallions. I'm not cooking it. And basically for the mushrooms, the mushrooms are like sponges. They really soak up everything. That's kind of why you don't wash mushrooms. People say, don't wash it, just wipe it off. It's because they will just soak up any moisture that comes in contact with it. So right now, this little time that I've been sauteing is soaking up all that yummy flavor. Now let's add some more yummy flavor. This is sesame oil. Oh, I love sesame oil. You have to be careful though. A little bit goes a long way. A little bit goes up. It's quite um, strong if you go overboard. You don't want to do that. You want to taste your vegetable and then also that layer of sesame oil, that layer of onion, that layer of green onion, that mushroom. You don't just want it all to be one little, one note, one note. Okay, so another couple of seconds here. And look how pretty that is. Gorgeous. I have to tell you, you don't have to sweat this down completely. You really don't. Why? We're gonna wrap it in an egg roll and we're gonna fry it. It will cook again within that egg roll. But what I do want to do is I'm going to transfer this to a strainer and I'm going to have all the juices drip away because uh, we don't want a soggy, soggy egg. So we're going to try to get all that moisture out. But 
please do not, no, 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 do not throw away any of that lovely juices. Oh. What we do is we add that juice into some vinegar and garlic and some scallions, and we use that as a dipping sauce. Oh. We call it um, Filipino, and we call it suka. And with suka, <laughs> I have to make sure the syllable is correct because there's another word for suka we will talk about. <laughs> <laughs> So it's awful. You guys will be laughing. I'll tell you later. <laughs> but uh, so let's do that. We're going to uh, go ahead and strain this. One sec. And we are going to just really pour this out. Lovely, lovely, lovely. There I go. I was about to say lovely, lovely, jumbly, you guys. <laughs> I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> uh. <laughs> can you say something? Can you say something about encouraging people to go to the Asian market to not be, you know, to not be daunted by something that they're not familiar with? Because there's so many wonders there. And oh my goodness. I have to tell you, everybody out there, yes, please. Go for a field trip. Make a day yes. of it. It's yes. an experience. First of all, it's nice to see the culture. It'll be thrown into a different world. And usually it's a couple blocks of yes. literally a different world that you would never have seen unless you have gone overseas. But immerse yourself into this. It is so interesting to see how it's their process works and how, how the food is displayed. I was just talking about this the other day on the, another show that I was filming. It was the uh, Pro Chef, uh, Home Chef show. And they said, do I enjoy Asian markets? And I said, I absolutely love walking back and forth and on the sidewalk and seeing the food displayed in ice. I love all the live food. I love the, everything's alive. Everything's I know. Alive. <laughs> I, I absolutely love it. I remember as a kid, I also told them that I kind of always wanted to be near the fishmonger or the butcher. Yeah. You know, if, if my mom was going shopping, there would be an extra cart just for to park me in front of the butcher counter or the fishmonger because I found it fascinating. And I was just a kid because I was still sitting in that seat that they had provided <laughs> in those carts. So I was little. I was just always in awe of it. So. If you want to kind of just expand your, your mind, because they're so friendly, they want to help you there too. Yes. Uh, you might not understand them completely fully, but you know, food is universal, but it'll be fun for you to just buy a few things and just try it. I mean, it, it, there's and the spices, the spices. I mean, the things Absolutely. that you can't. Oh my Whole goodness. Foods, Whole Foods or, or Trader Joe's will not do that for you. You need to, that world right. of spices. Yes, there were, you can go around the world in your cupboard if you're packed with spices. Yeah. And that's what, Good the point. only way you're going to do that is if you go to an actual Asian market or any uh, nationality and just kind of pick and choose, almost have fun with it. You know, you might not even know what it is, and just go home and find out and see how you can play with it. It, you know, you'll have fun trying, it, but yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's just a blast. Okay, so as we move on, this is going to just cool off and drip. I'm actually gonna put this over here. And my mystery sea chef. <laughs> okay. Um, we're gonna let that cool because it does need to cool a little bit. Uh, for my veggie rolling polies, I use spring rolls, which are rice paper. Uh, now that's something you would find only in the Asian market. You can certainly use egg wrapper, which I will show you, first of all, just real quick. This is your typical egg wrapper that you would find in your grocery store. It's a flour-based egg wrapper, a little thicker, than a rice paper um, wrapper, which is this, literally like paper. And as you see, I keep them covered because they do dry out quickly. You're gonna have to do that as you work through. So I'm gonna use the rice paper for the veggie oil and 
But now let's move on to something that I literally invented for my niece because she was hungry one day and she loves meat and potatoes like me. She really did. So that's, so we're going to make Bubba's beef and potato egg rolls. <laughs> now we're going to use this. It's really funny. Um, real quick. I've already prepped, uh, some russet potatoes. Now, these were, uh, you're supposed to use four, you're gonna serve 10 to 12. You can certainly use mashed potatoes from the box. It's totally fine. I've done it, believe me, but I prefer my potatoes in egg rolls a little chunky. So I kind of leave the chunks in there and I like using russet potatoes. I like making my own. So these four um, potatoes were cut and quartered. They were boiled for 20 minutes and in the salted water. I let them cool off a bit, dry out a bit, the cream, the salt, and butter. So it's ready to go. That's already kind of cooled off. Now I must do the star of the show, which is the beef. One second. And voila. Hello, beef. <laughs> Just happens to be packaged in this lovely green, this lovely green, green place. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use the same beautiful pan. Doesn't matter. Okay, now I am gonna do a little bit of oil. Yes? Uh, may I have a little bit of veggie oil behind? Perfect. Yep. If there was oil in here, I've just left it, I wouldn't have uh, taken it out. But we're gonna do again. I'm always a two tablespoon kind of guy with a veggie oil. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to put this back up. Okay. At this point, people always ask me, why aren't you putting anything else in there as a, why are you putting in aromatics in there first, like your onions, your garlic, etc.? Well, I want texture. And this is the same technique I would use if I was going to make regular old tacos. People out there, please don't say it so, but I hope you folks out there, when you make your tacos and if you're happy to use in ground beef, don't just shove it all in there and boil it. <laughs> you don't want it, you literally need to brown your meat. Even if it's brown, it's browning the meat. It's not a slab of meat, it is ground meat, but you're still gonna brown it. So let us do that. And in order to brown it, I'm gonna have to use all the space in my pan, okay? Use all the surface area. This is a pretty nice pan size pan. And let's leave it alone for a second. I'm just trying to clean up. Woo! Is it hot over there? I am hot. It's hot in the kitchen, folks. <laughs> Uh, you're in the Hudson, your East Coast heat. Yeah. Do you have any other questions while we're browning this real quick? I'm just oh, yeah. Say. I have a hundred questions for you. Sure. Do you um, uh, ever listen to music or anything when you cook? I mean, I know you do all this demo stuff, but when you are all alone cooking, what is that like for you? Oh, wow. You really, really, that is really a hilarious question. <laughs> People will find this a very odd because I do the same thing when I lift weights. I listen to motivational speakers. Oh, really? Constantly. Like it's an hour and a half back to back motivational speakers from Arnold Schwarzenegger to ex president. I know it sounds a little funky. I know it's, I don't know why I do it. I do not listen to music, but when I have company and I'm cooking, there is music playing. I actually have a refrigerator that has a screen on it and it can play music. And believe it or not, it plays country. I listen to a lot of, I listen to a lot of country music. Hey, I think, I think the motivational speaking is working because you are one of the most upbeat, uh, <laughs> like I said, infectious people I've ever met. You want to be- Oh, that is so nice. You lift the room up. Awesome. You lift a room up. You do. I have to tell you, you know, when we started filming the four levels, it was just a pilot. It was just, they were trying to just, uh, uh, trying to just see if it would work. 
We had no idea that, goodness gracious, I filmed a combination of that series and two spin off. There's at least 25, 27 shows already, and we're not stopping. I just filmed a couple more. Good. Um, it is crazy fun. It's so lovely to walk into a beautiful, pristine kitchen that's not yours and you don't have to clean up. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I have a theory about the show, though. I think that makes those of us who are um, sometimes lack confidence in our own kitchens that we yeah. feel good when we feel like we can be a level two. Do you see what I'm saying? It like it helps yeah. us build confidence. Yeah. That- well, there are you know a lot of these foods that they give us. Sometimes I've never made, um, yeah. um, but there's all ones that I have just constantly made. I just put my twist on it. But it's weird how they put me as level two. I thought I was going to be level one, to be quite honest with you. No, you no. Because I had no idea. You're entering, you know, the, the Epicureans. Yes. <laughs> yes. So yes. I thought I was just this little little guy. And here, they had all these crazy levels. So, oh, what happened? Did, Bubba, what happened? Something, yeah. did, you, did I lose you guys? No, no you're here. You're good. 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 We got you. You're good. Okay. So what has been, um, is the schedule wacky? Like, I mean, what time do you guys tape? Like, when are you doing your show for, for level four? Like it, what time of day is that for you? Wow. Uh, it's first of all, it's back to back. Yeah. If you see me on a show, a one show, one week, and then maybe two weeks later, you see me another one. I, I filmed those back to back to oh. back. <laughs> So oh. it starts at nine. I have my coffee and I'm, I leave there by seven. Wow. But you have a slew of people there. Production, everyone that helps us is absolutely, you know, the creme de la creme of their, their game. They're awesome. They're like family. A lot of times we work with the exact same people, the directors, the producers, the the, just everybody involved, the sound, the culinary help. I mean, everybody involved is just, uh, it, it really is like family. You walk, I walk in and I say, hey. <laughs> and it's like, you're, you're at home again. It, it's quite fun. Um, you know what I would love them to do one time? And I'll, maybe I'll get in trouble for this, but it's only between me and you and everybody else watching. <laughs> <laughs> I would love them to do some raffle or a contest to have a fan come in and yeah. do the same thing we do. I would love that so Wouldn't much. That, be cool? that would be so fun and it'd be so that fun. That would be super, super yeah. fun. Okay, so uh, now just real quick, back to the beef. Uh, the beef gets a lot of juices coming out of it. So I tend to take them out because if I, if I don't, it will not brown. So uh, I'm going to do that and let that go. We're going to add uh, the onions and we're also going to add the garlic. Um, I like browning a little bit longer to get that texture, as I said, on this lovely, lovely beef. I need salt and pepper though, folks. Done that. I've never seen the thing that has the, the two, oh. two sides of it. I haven't seen that. You know, my sister buys some crazy things. She loves gizmo gadgets and all these <laughs> other things. And I'm telling you, she was a big help. You know all those dishes in my book that you yes. see that my, my food is placed on? Yes. Every one of them is owned by my sister. <laughs> oh, nice. And she was very particular that one wasn't used the same time or, or uh, over again, or that shape didn't, uh, the shadow on that's off. It, it's very, very appealing. Tell her, tell her we like it because it's very Yes, appealing. I loved it too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get the onions and garlic. <laughs> My sous chefs are out there uh, behind the laptop going. <laughs> Everybody also asks, why do I put garlic pretty much closer to the end? Well, since I'm using always high, kind of high heat, 
I don't want to burn the gar garlic because I minced it. The smaller the garlic is, the faster it's gonna burn. And I don't want that burnt nutty flavor, uh, particularly for this. Um, so I'm gonna saute this. I will now put the garlic. That's a reveal moment for me. I was always doing my garlic first and then adding the meat. So this is a switch. Yeah. Well, you know what? You probably just sliced it or perhaps it was just like crushed real quick and yeah, yeah. Cold still, and that infused the flavor into oil. Uh, there is a dish in the book that is called mommy. It's actually a soup. It's a chicken soup for vegetables. And the main ingredient, the key ingredient is browned garlic, okay. browned potato garlic. And you wanted to get that to the almost to the point where it's not burnt, but just really still like almost gonna turn. And that is the most beautiful uh, ingredient to add to a broth. It is absolutely delicious, absolutely delicious. Okay, so I am sauteing away. Ooh, I can see myself. My assistants have given me <laughs> a look. Oh, well, I'd rather not see myself. <laughs> For everybody out there uh, watching, uh, I was talking about this earlier that I never, ever, when they tell us to go to set, I never look at the mirror beforehand. I don't want to. It'll make me nervous. <laughs> and I'm always nervous right before I start filming. But for some reason, when they point at you and the, the light turns on, I don't know what happens to me. And I apologize if I'm a goofy, goofy person, but I really had a great time building all the shows every time. There's not one time I didn't enjoy it. I really, it's not one time. But you're, you're an actor, right? Were you in a movie? You were in a movie. Oh goodness, I was on several movies. I really, I am a professional actor. That is what I do for a living. This was just a fluke. This was just a, I, a friend of a friend asked me to do it or saw an ad and I said, no, I don't want to do it because I didn't, I wanted to kind of, I'm an actor. I want to, I want to dig deep. I want drama and this is food. So they, they said, no, try it. It'll, it'll be fun. It'll just break up the monotony of going to auditions that aren't fun during the day. And so, I did it and literally a couple of weeks later, we did another shoot and within a week or so, I got a call that it's an actual show. It kind of went viral without me knowing. I didn't know that it could do this. And on YouTube, within minutes, it went viral to the world. And I can't even tell you, I have one video that's almost 45 million views. I know went number one trending on YouTube within 10 minutes of it learning. It was the weirdest, crazy. Uh, I, had, I had relatives that I had not seen in years going, what the? <laughs> but you don't have time to go audition anymore, right? Like you don't, are you still- Oh, I, I did five auditions before I got here, I did them. Are you serious? Okay. okay. Yeah. You are a man I, uh, with a lot of energy. <laughs> well, I'm a one take wonder kind of guy. I don't have, I will not beat myself up if I don't get it correctly or else what I think is correctly. I do it as natural as, per, as possible because they're hiring me pretty much for who you are as well as what you can do. So I, I, I say one take wonder and that's why I can dish them out pretty quickly. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you guys, we're talking. We are talking. It's a, they're like, start cooking, Lorenzo. <laughs> uh, am I just, am I derailing you from your cooking? Okay. We'll, we'll... Okay. okay, I think I'm gonna do the potatoes now. Yeah, guys? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is still warm, which is totally fine. I've turned off the heat completely. And I have these lovely chunky, chunky monkey. Oh no, that's chunky monkeys on my, my chocolate chip trees. Chunky monkey uh, mashed potatoes. I'm gonna add this in, and we're gonna kind of gently boil, fold it in. Don't worry if you're not as gentle as you need to be. Uh, it's not like it's uh, whipped egg whites. I'm gonna start with that first. There's no messing. Okay, there's really no messing. 
I'm going to fold this in first, but I'm also going to use a soy sauce. Yes, yes. <laughs> My soy sauce is like, don't forget the soy sauce. Uh, what I like to do is I like to fold a little bit first, and then I will add the soy sauce. You must use the soy sauce. That will give it a nice flavor. Now, I have to tell you, what's not really cool about beef and potato egg rolls is you can use this as a meal, too. If you serve two or three of them, they're pretty good size. And if you cover it with your favorite gravy, that can be a meat potatoes meal. Or if you want to be fun and use your gravy as a dipping sauce, if you're serving it just as hors d'oeuvres or just mini egg rolls. So it's kind of cool how versatile this can be. Um, you can freeze these for quite a while and uh, you can just thaw them out. Always thaw them out before you fry them. And uh, it's nice to have around, you know, who needs, uh, who needs hot pockets? I do love hot pockets though, no hot <laughs> I do love hot pockets. But when you have these in your, your freezer, why not? I love egg rolls. There are a million and one egg rolls that I actually can make. I actually make a mozzarella pepperoni egg roll also. It's wow. crazy. Dip it in marinara. But so this is about, uh, for, for the full recipe, I use four tablespoons of, of soy sauce, okay? Uh, full salt soy sauce, go for it. And this is just gonna bring out this lovely beef flavor and combine with this beautiful, beautiful mashed potatoes. Now, my niece loves more potatoes, okay? She always says, I like it with more. Where's the potatoes? <laughs> <It's> actually, <laughs> let me get her voice. There's no potatoes. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> She's that. right here. She's right here. I apologize. She does not sound like that. Um, I'm just joking. Uh, so I'm going to add a little bit more potato, and then we're going to put it in a different bowl. And we'll put this in the refrigerator. It's I always put it in the refrigerator because I need it to cool. Uh, just cool real quick. Uh, you just want it a little bit. Uh, less hot in order to work with it. Um, uh, but we will be putting them both mixtures, this mixture, uh, as well as my sauteed vegetable mixture in uh, bags, like piping bags, makeshift piping bags. I always use them because it's easy. You don't have to do that. Believe me, when I was little, I never did. It was always just using spoons, and rolling them up and putting it in the center of an egg roll. But uh, why not make it a little easier for yourself? You'd be surprised. And it's so funny. I think some people out there never even saw that before whenever I was, my aunt particularly, she's never done that. And she probably is just like, why did you not tell me? I've been making egg rolls for years and you did not tell me this step. Oh. Okay, so there you go, folks. It is just beef and potato max. So. Let's move on. I'm going to get the vegetables out that have been cooling. I'm going to clean this up real quick and uh, we're going to start rolling. As we're doing that, please ask, uh, ask some questions. Okay, good. I love the little um, the introductions to the recipes, the, the pieces of writing that you did for that. How easy was that process for you to sort of sit down and, and write these wonderful little tiny introductions and like a little consolidated fun essay before each recipe. I really loved the chicken dinner in the book. Is dinner, winter, chicken epic. dinner? Epic. I loved the chicken dinner. I think every chef has a roasted <laughs> chicken meal in them yeah. that they want to talk about. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, with the, uh, I'll tell you the whole story, but that particular recipe, winter, winter, chicken dinner, uh, as of course made for my niece. She loves all those uh, with chicken dinner with all the fixings. But the reason I wrote it like that, <laughs> it was actually one of the first recipes I wrote. I used to work at a carnival called Jolly Rogers in Maryland when I was like 16. And I worked this booth called the birthday booth. And I would say in my spiel, 
Come on over, come on in. Anybody can play, anybody can win. How about it, folks? And oh my goodness, I think we were giving away, what were we giving away? Uh, just gigantic uh, 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 dogs or gigant gigantic uh, stuffed animals. And for some odd re reason, we we're like, winner, winner, but this is the winner, winner chicken dinner. And then I, that popped into my head what I used to say as a kid, very odd. But the big secret, and you guys are the first, and I will not get in trouble to say this, you literally, you folks are gonna be the first one to know this. I wrote this book on my thumb, literally. Get out. <laughs> I didn't use a laptop, I didn't use a Kindle, I didn't use it. An iPad, I used my phone, and wherever I was, sitting in a subway, sitting on a train going to work, sitting outside waiting for the mail to come, I would just plop the phone out and just start writing recipes. I literally wrote the entire book on the phone. You are literally the first person I told that. I, never, I didn't know if I was gonna ever reveal that. <laughs> It's an incredible story because it means that you just allowed it to be a work in progress wherever you were. I love that idea. It was very flowy. It was very, you're, you're actually correct the way you put that. It was very natural. It was almost like whenever I felt like saying it, I would just, instead of jotting down notes, I would just literally write it. So it, you know, because ideas come to you all day, don't they? Like recipes, if you see yes. something and you see a recipe that you want to kind of copy or recreate someday, you would drop it, draw a note. Well, I would like smell something passing a slew of uh, restaurants and going, oh, that reminded me of this one dinner I made. Uh, it's a machado, which is a beef dinner. And, and so I just sat down wherever I was and just, Started typing away. There are times I would walk into like a, like a Chili's or a, a Friday's, sit at the bar. I'll have one beer. That's a lot. And <laughs> and I would just start typing. I wouldn't order any food, and I would just start typing. Typing because whatever I smelt coming from it kind of reminded me of something I I had eaten or was given in the past, and that's how I uh, kind of developed constantly writing the book it, it, it's kind of crazy you i almost ran, i ran out of memory thank gosh i, I bought more <laughs> <laughs> but uh I, at one point i wasn't thinking i thought oh my gosh i need to back this up so uh yeah i wrote that, it on the phone is that crazy i think it's crazy but it's absolutely crazy. wonderful it worked crazy. all right i'm gonna put this away real quick and i'm gonna move some things over i shall Unplug this really quick. Oh no, no, you know what? I'm not gonna unplug this because we're gonna fry these using the same one. I'm gonna turn this back on. Let's roll up. Let us clear a little bit. Oh, that is that is really funny. I told you that story, you guys. I never thought I was gonna reveal it. You guys know that I never I feel privileged you chose to reveal it. <laughs> okay. Lucky. Lucky. I need the vegetable first. Let's do the veggies. Let's use this right here. Oh, she's trying not to be in her funny. So the vegetables have nicely. May I have a, uh, a fork? Thank you. Any forks, fine. Oh goodness. Okay. So, folks, the veggies have cooled. Of course, they've wilted. Uh, oh, okay. It wasn't that juicy. I didn't use a lot of oil. And plus, we only did half of a, a, a um, recipe. But I can smell the onion, the scallions, the sesame seed oil. Woo -hoo! I love that. So this is ready to go. And what I said before is I, I like to use rice. Oh, can you hear the footsteps of the doggy coming in? <laughs> Cadbury, I'm busy. Pardon me, folks. So uh, we are going to use the rice paper wrapper. Uh, the rice paper wrapper is a thin wrapper. Hi, Cadbury. How are you? So let's do that first. Have you folks seen this paper, this type of wrapper before? It's very thin, very pliable, but it does dry up quickly. 
Have you seen these? Are you keeping it? How are you keeping it moist? Is, are they wetted? They're not wet at all. I'm just, I just cover it with a, 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 a kitchen towel. Okay. I don't wet it at all or else they'll stick together. <laughs> You'll end up having one gigantic <laughs> big, big, big wrapper. Uh, so no, I just cover it and just, it'll keep. Okay. It'll keep. Um, plus it's a little moist today. It's humid today. So, all right. So what I'm going to do here is I typically put everything that I roll for egg rolls in my makeshift uh, um, piping bag, which uh, I'll show you how to do it real quick. You don't have to do this because it's not that messy bit. I want to show it to you because I said it in the book and um, it does help move things faster uh, as well. So uh, I'm going to... I am going to... Yes. Drum roll, please. I like this because we all have bags like that in the kitchen. So this is good. Yeah. Some oh, you know what though? Don't have the ones with a gusset. If there's a gusset, that's a no-no. <laughs> okay. So these are the typical regular Ziploc with, uh, these are the Ziplocs with no gusset. You know, it's just the point. Okay. And uh, so we got this here. And it's oh. nice and cool. And I just literally, Ball it up at the end. And I take about, a, you know, a, an inch or so. Now, depending on what size, goodness Lord, depending on what size egg roll you want to make. If you want to make finger food egg rolls, if you're serving it as hors d'oeuvres and you want everybody to eat it as if it was a regular uh, pork egg roll and you can just dip with it, you can make the, 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 the whole a little smaller and it'll create thin ones. But I want them bigger because, uh, this is going to be my replacement for salad. So I, I want the egg rolls to be a little bigger. And if you can see, it's quite easy. I'm just going to do a couple. And, and so there it's uniform, sort of. And again, that's why it's important to drain it. Because if I did that and it, all the water or the moisture spread, it's going to be where it's going to be soggy. And in my book, it's the simple, you know, get your rolling <laughs> tutorial. You just, you know, cross, cross them over and tightly pack them. You try not to have any air. Oh, I broke that one a little bit. And a little egg at the end. And that is one. Let's do another one. Uh, and just to let you know, also, with these, since they are thin, you can double up on them. A lot of people like to, uh, a lot of people like to, hello, a lot of people like to double up because they love the crispiness of the spring roll wrapper. So um, we're going to, I'll show you that, actually. I'll, I'll double up and uh, we'll cook both. And then we'll show you, thank you. Okay. Okay, so beautiful colors, simple, simple. They're nice, easy to roll. The wrapper is pliable. You don't need a lot of the sealer egg. There's one scrambled egg. I like to use the whole egg. A lot of people like using wash. Uh, uh, I like using the, the, the yolks because the yolks actually help it also give a nice brown color to it. So that's with one wrap. I'm going to show you a second wrap and you'll see the difference in the texture or just the look of it. So you put the same one in, actually, let me put this one in and fold, fold, wrap. And seal. And there. Now what you do is uh, what you have here when you're working with uh, your egg rolls, after you're done sealing, make sure it is sealed. But then I always put it down, the seal down onto the surface with some, um, some uh, so what is that? 
<laughs> uh, some uh, flour. Okay, so uh, let me make another one. Let me make another one. And then we're going to move on to uh, cooking it, and I'm going to show you how to cut it. And then we'll talk about how to serve it also, what to serve it with as well. All right, so let's do that. Girls, if you could, can you put some of that beef and potato in uh, one of these bags, and I'll cut it myself? Okay, so there you go. There. <laughs> yes, sir. Quite easy, okay, like that. All right, and see the difference, how they're actually, the look of it, this one's broken, don't waste it. Please go ahead and use it. Might as well double it up. And you'll have a nice crispy egg roll. Okay, seal, 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 okay. We are going to move on to the beef and potato. Was that easy, you guys? Yes, that was okay. incredibly easy. Very, very easy, as I said. And you can certainly seal this. Put saran wrap around all your unused rice paper wrapper. Saran wrap, aluminum foil, sealer bag. Put it in the freezer. It'll be absolutely ready to go the next time you're making your goods. Okay, we are going to start with the beef with the 10 egg rolls. No, that's fine right there. Uh, excellent, thank you. Well, I'm cutting this. Could you walk over that? Be careful, hon. Can you walk over that pot of hot oil? Yep. Um, you know what? I need you to put that, can you do me before you walk it over? Let's heat it up again over there first. And I'll walk it over. I don't want you to. Okay, so. Beef and potato egg rolls, nice. Make sure it's uh, workable. Uh, what I mean by that is don't overfill this. You don't have to put all of it in. <laughs> Scoop some in a little at a time. And now we're working with the egg roll, which is a flour, flour-based wrapper, thicker, much easier to work with, but also does dry up. That's why I put it uh, under a, a, a cloth. So uh, they're never perfectly square. <laughs> so you need to kind of go with it. And uh, it's still rolled up the same way. I'm going to have this about an inch, an inch and a half. You can always swipe again with the squeeze. If you can see, this is really the easy way. This was actually in the book. That is actually the one little serving. If you want it more of a meal, I, you put another uh, serving of it and uh, it'll be more hearty. But let's keep it at this size for now. And then we will go ahead and hug this. A little bit of egg wash. And voila. Very, very easy. We'll do a few of these actually. And uh, again, what's really, really nice about these uh, egg rolls is the the thing you serve it with really kind of elevates it as in the sauce you serve it with if i make this and i serve it with gravy people will say oh this is like a meal meal this really reminds me of that meat and potatoes meal. if i serve it with ketchup mixed with some sriracha it's like oh you're getting fancy in here <laughs> it's whatever you want to serve it with i love ketchup i love that vinegar in ketchup uh, most sweet and sour, well, all sweet and sour sauces are made with ketchup first. You saute ketchup. Uh, it's quite easy. You actually just saute three or four tablespoons of ketchup. It's in my book. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a lucky ducky sauce. You just saute ketchup in some oil, you salt, and you add some vinegar and some broth and thickener, and it's, it's fantastic. Um, uh, okay, here we go. So, How's that going with the heat? Heating. Okay. Yeah. So um, have you ever had a beef and potato egg roll before you guys? I have never had one. And I, I <laughs> look at it, I'm a meat and potatoes girl. And I Are you? Oh, yeah. Uh, it. it is just, it never very, can be very hearty. As I said, you can serve them as huge as enchiladas and just cover it with sauce. And people will be like, oh my God, that is fantastic. You know? Yeah. How, um, why didn't I ever have this before? 
But um, again, these are probably, <laughs> well, actually they are two of my favorite uh, egg rolls that I ever made before, but you can be very versatile with your egg rolls. Seafood egg rolls, uh, cheese egg rolls, pizza egg rolls, meat, meatball egg rolls, I love. Please, anybody out there, if you have extra meatballs after making meatball spaghetti, <laughs> go ahead and roll them into some egg roll wrappers, fry them up, and you will actually love it. Just dip it in some marinara sauce. Holy smoke, just thinking about it, my mind is blown. Okay. <laughs> okay, one more, just for the heck of it. Uh, what else you guys want to talk about? Well, I was wondering, like, do you, you live in a amazing, the Hudson and Valley and then New York. It's like, do you eat out a lot or do you have any time to eat out? Do you? Oh my gosh. I love restaurants. I love top of bars. I, I really would love to go. And I believe it's in my book. I would love to just travel and try food at, from every restaurant. I'll just order an appetizer for every restaurant. I think that would be the funnest trip in the world. Yes. You don't want to top a trip. <laughs> um, do I love eating out? I, if, you know, people say, is it hard for you to choose what to eat? Or are you picky about what comes out to you? Do you critique it? Of course I critique it, but usually I, I like it. it. It's always a nice place. And, you know, I only critique it if it's yucky. <laughs> but if it's good, you know, you'll get all the thumbs up from me. <laughs> yeah, thanks. You'll, you'll be, I'll be happy. I'll be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, does it I also inspire? Does it What's give that? you? Does it inspire you? Does it give you ideas? Like, do you go places and yeah. go? I'm gonna riff off of that dish. Uh, absolutely. I always. There is not a meal that I have had that I don't make myself that I haven't riffed off. I, yeah. I definitely have, I would grab something from, oh, I've never had that together before. Yeah. And I would totally take it. I tell you what, my favorite types of restaurants are the ones that you see the chef. Cook. I love that interaction where it's an yeah. open kitchen. Yes. That is super cool. That is super, super cool. I love that too. Okay, I'm going to bring over the oil. Excuse me real quick. I didn't want my nieces to walk it over. No, 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 no. Thank you. And I am back. I'm back from vacation. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put you guys away. We've got lots of egg rolls to make for future. Hey, do you have a suggestion on walks? You know, finding good walks is hard out in California. It's like, do you have ideas? Like, um, on the, oh, really? Like, or types of walks that you really believe? Well, Luckily, by in the city, there's so many of the uh, the industrial shops, you know, yeah. where the restaurants use, the like restaurant warehouses kind of yes. thing. You can definitely find it there. But I tell you, the best walk I spent, I, you'd find is literally walking into that Asian community okay. and, yeah. and exploring, pick up a walk while you buy some spices, folks. Yeah. You know, okay. they would really have it, and it's so. While you're there, get a rice cooker. It's probably $12 and it gives you perfect rice every time. You yeah. Honestly, but it's easy to make rice. I mean, I was, I was brought up, uh, you know, brought up eating rice all the time, but sometimes I didn't have a rice cooker with me, but I certainly know how to make rice without one. Um, but yeah, you should, uh, you should be able to find one. Explore. The walks are out there. And you know what? I do prefer the darker ones like this. Yes. To yeah. these silver ones. I believe these heat up a little bit more where they can conduct the heat a little bit better, uh, especially if you're using something this, this, like this stove. For some reason, the silver ones, unless you're using flame, won't uh, really conduct the heat as well. As okay. I, uh, so, That's a good tip. It's a good tip. Yeah. Because yeah. I actually have to use... <laughs> Did you, did you, I actually was wondering, did you say that because you saw me using a walk on Epicurious and it wasn't working? No, 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 no. I've just, I've, I see so many walks. I just want to know what's oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, on, on Epicurious, there was one time I was using, I think I was making fried rice. And it, first of all, it looked like Captain America's shield. It was enormous. It was <laughs> brand new. And I was using a conductor, <laughs> conducting uh, oven, no flame. And guys, it, it's taking literally an hour to get up a couple of degrees. So yeah. we have to scratch that and move on. But that is a really good question. It is important to have your favorite little walk. And this is the fun one. Look at this little cute little one. I like the size of that one, yeah. Really, really cute, really, really nice. Again, um, you have to thank my sister for all these cool dishes. She kind of really is a collector of dishes and gives no gadgets, I must say. Okay, so what we have is, uh, I heated this up back on the flame. I didn't, I wanted this to be nice and hot. Um, it's not super, super hot. Uh, the temperature, you might want to check your temperature on your, uh, on your, what do I have for the temperature for the, the oil here? Is it like, uh, do I have it at three something? Or, no, 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 no. It's like 175 or something like that. Well, test it, okay? Uh, what I want to do is, I always take a piece of the egg roll I, I don't feel like using my thermometer. Uh, I brought it, but I always take a piece of egg roll because you know I don't carry my thermometer with me all the time if I'm cooking at a friend's house on vacation. And I test it. So right there, uh, it came up. It started floating right off the bat. If it doesn't float right away, you guys, your 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 oil ain't hot. <laughs> <laughs> so, Good way to know. Good way to. Know. That is, has always been my motto. So now what we see here is one pot of oil, but we have two different egg rolls. Now it's important to do these in batches. I always like to do my vegetables first. Why? Because there's no soy sauce in it that will kind of not necessarily contaminate the oil. It's the, the soy sauce in the beef and the potato will kind of make this like oil unusable, unusable only for beef and potato egg rolls, you know what I mean? So let's just do all your vegetables first, and then we will do, oh, look at that. Then we'll move on to the, the beef and potato. So, lovely, lovely, lovely. That is so funny. Kitty, I, my sister, I told them that I wrote the book on my phone. I revealed the secret. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. So, Everything inside of these egg rolls are cooked. So basically you're just eyeballing you to see how nice and brown you want the outside. Remember now, these are the rice paper egg roll wrapper, which will cook a lot quicker than the egg based wrapper, flour and the flour based egg roll wrapper. So I'm just gonna show you real quick that it's already hardened and brown. I'm turning it over already. Again, you're just going for looks now. Um, uh, yep. Oh, I stuck one in. <laughs> I stuck a beef and potato egg roll in. Boo, where are you? Right? That's a, no, did I sneak one in? Oh my gosh, no I didn't. Those are vegetable egg rolls. <laughs> Look what you had me doing. I have sweat in my eyes. Okay, <laughs> again. I want you to see, I'll show you in a second, the difference between a one wrap egg roll and a two wrap. I love the two wrap because it just, you can never mess it up with two wrap up and it looks so good and the crispy crunch gets them every time. If it's a one egg roll wrap, um, they'll slightly fragile and uh, you know, you can't just eat it without a plate. <laughs> so, so. But then again, I eat it so fast, nothing ever falls out. Okay, so I'm gonna let this go golden. I like it golden. Now I could have put so many different egg rolls on this book. There's of course the typical Shanghai egg roll, the egg roll, that's a Shanghai egg roll that is um, pork in a lot of veggies. There's water chestnuts in it. Um, I love water chestnuts. But I just wanted to do something different. Um, uh, goodness, I, I, I think I have to do a second book. <laughs> 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 there are a lot of recipes out there and picking and choosing the recipes to put in this book was actually quite, quite interesting. 
it's how do you pick the best of the best? What are the best of the best? And I just went with my gut and I actually, I went more definitely with my gut. I went with my belly. I literally said, what do I love to do? And these were my top six events. Oh, I love it. There's a yeah. real balance in the book. It go, it, it, you really curated it into a good representation of different ways of eating for all different occasions. I found that I'm really- glad. I'm glad. I was, I was a little worried because I can do like vegetable. Just for the people out there who are vegan or like more vegetables, please, you can re- literally interchange the meats with hearty vegetables. Just use vegetables. I have friends who have already posted a review and she switched out instead of using chicken, she just used lentils and potatoes and more beans. Ended up with a beautiful, beautiful dish. Good. I felt so, there was a lot of versatility. I felt that you left a lot of room for us to put our own stamp on it. And yeah, I totally it. play with it. Yeah. So yeah. as you can see, they're nice and golden and these are the vegetable. Now, typically, you know, not everybody, all of us have this wire rack at home, uh, but we do have a, a, a bowl strainer, you know, that you could use. And if you were using that, I would just put paper towels on it and put it vertical so it really, really drains. I'm just doing this just because I'm showing off my new equipment. <laughs> It looks delicious. I'm so hungry. Watching oh, your okay. Face. okay, again, real quick. So now, <laughs> so now that this uh, this uh, um, has been done, we've done the uh, vegetables. Let's pretend we did a whole bunch of vegetables. Now we want to the beef and potato because there might be a little bit of seepage of the the uh, the um, um, soy sauce into the oil. And then you're only going to want to use this oil for beef and potato. No harm, no foul. It's just that if you want to do two things, do this first and that second. Okay. But uh, what other questions you folks out there in Never Never Land? <laughs> we want to know, like, do you, um, I know that for me, some of my favorite uh, shows were like Anthony Bourdain and David Chang, you know, where they go places and things like that. Do you... To have any time to travel? Do you get ever get away from your massively impacted schedule? And if you do, where do you go? So, so far, of course, I love to travel. I always was one of those guys who wanted to have that nice trip every year to look forward to. But now with working as an actor, that's been my travel, which is kind of nice. So wherever it will be, whether it be from the West Coast, it could be to Carolinas, it could be Atlanta, Canada, wherever my work takes me, I'll stay a day or two just to kind of chill if I can. Yeah. But to me, that's really the only travel I, I am able to do. Um, what's nice is I will be traveling for, I'll be doing a show, uh, a live show, a TV show in LA in July. So I'll be able to enjoy that a little bit. But uh, hopefully when I do have a chance, I'm going back to the islands, folks. I'm telling you, <laughs> Kauai is calling my name. I love, I, I love the beach. I love, if I see a palm tree, it just puts a smile on my face. It can be a picture of a palm tree <laughs> I on my phone. That's only, matter of fact, I have a picture of, of me lying, my toes are sticking out of the sand on the beach and it just puts me in a good mood. But, I would love to travel the world. Uh, in my true, true fantasies and fantasies, I want to go to the Philippines and try every single thing I can. Fruit dishes, fish dishes, fresh fruit, vegetables. Um, uh, as I don't know if you know this, I was actually born in America. I'm the only one in my family that was born here. I must go! <laughs> yeah. so, pilgrimage, um, pilgrimage, yes. Yeah, it would be great. So, uh, again, this is, oh my. Let's try this now. Yeah, it's all good. So, these are uh, flower based. They're a little thicker. They can handle a little bit more heat. Don't worry if you get a little dark. Just, we're going to be cutting it on the bias. We'll just scrape that down. No, <laughs> it's all good. Um, whenever you serve these, I like to serve it with a plethora of different sauces. Now, 
again, we have uh, the typical vegetable um, uh, egg roll sauce, vegetable plate egg roll sauce is uh, vinegar, crushed, crushed uh, garlic, salt and pepper, a little bit of scallions. And if there's the extra sauce from the drippings, you throw that in. That's lovely. That's actually in my book too. Uh, uh, I, what is it called? Um, my, uh, <laughs> what? What? my uh, it's the vinegar sauce in my book. No, oh, I'm testing you guys. You don't know oh, my, no. my sauce it's is like, it's in the, it's flipped in the back. Flipped it. Oh. I knew what it was. <laughs> they didn't know what it was. You know, no. when you were talking, oh my goodness. Know, these people, these people. Okay, it's mm -hmm. called flipped it. Now, no, I didn't. So <laughs> now, uh, I'm gonna take these out. I'm gonna take these out. Oh, That's okay. I was talking, but it's a good. Okay, so turn this on. Okay, so we're gonna let these cool for a second before we cut into it. Uh, let it settle. Uh, that way, it doesn't just spread all over the place. I always cut it on the bias, <laughs> and I think it's because one, it's fancy schmancy to chancy, and two. It makes it look like you have a lot. So if you don't have a lot, cut it on the bias and you say, oh, you went out crazy and out of your way and you are fantastic. Um, it's just a nice presentation to have it like that. Um, it's really, really great. Um, can I cut on this or no? So uh, once again, my <laughs> sister, I mean, who, who goes out and buys this? I. I'm gonna go out and buy a long. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. That's why I asked. Am I allowed to put a knife on it? <laughs> presentation, <else>? presentation. <laughs> yeah, presentation, presentation. So you do need a serrated knife, just your average uh, bread knife is totally fine. I'm gonna start with the, um, the, they're so light. I have to start, the veggie roller pullings are so light. It actually is very, you don't feel guilty eating these because one, it's salad, and two, it's just absolutely delicious. I, I, I don't think whenever I was a kid and I ate these, I started dipping it in everything I possibly could because I just wanted to eat them. I didn't have to dip them in anything. I, I thought they were delicious besides them. But so I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut the big one up. I'm gonna put this here, but I'm gonna. So this is the veggie roly polies. It's so pretty. You can actually put them up like this, you know, if you if you want, on an angle, things like that. Uh, beef and potato. Serve with your favorite gravy. Serve it with ketchup. Serve it with sriracha. Serve it with hot sauce. I mean. It is absolutely delicious and it's fun. You know, I, I, I it's just serving in a board like this. It's really, really fun. It's pretty. And guess what folks, I have to try it. <laughs> Pardon me for two yes. seconds. Oh, you're killing me with that. <laughs> oh, goodness. Wow. Wow. Every time. You know what? That's exactly the same <laughs> reaction every time I make these. It's just so good. I really hope you guys try this. I really, really do. However you want to spin it, add a few more spices into it. It's totally fine. But just as long as you use the base of everything that we have here and then just play with all the sauces. And hey, man, have a party. Have a little get together. It's, it's all good. To show off what you can do, and I tell you what, your friends won't leave the house. <laughs> this has been so much fun. We have to let everybody go, and I like the encouragement of saying, "Look at that! Look how cute and adorable that is, and how everybody would be impressed if you brought that to a party." So <laughs> I'm I, I totally love it. Thank you so much for actually being here today, everybody. Thank you for my participation. I hope you folks enjoy reading the book, have fun cooking. I hope you laugh a little bit when you do so. 
Um, I hope there's stories in there or something uh, that you kind of love as much as I love writing on my phone. And um, I appreciate it. Thank you for everything. And uh, hopefully I get to meet you someday. Oh, I hope so too. And I think uh, there, there, this was so much fun and there is so much laughter and joy to be had in this cookbook. I want you to come and buy stacks of these uh, from Book Passage. We're online or in the store. We have signed copies. Lorenzo was kind enough to get us signed copies. So this would make a great gift for anybody, any level of uh, cook chef in your life. Um, really have fun in the kitchen and at the table. You just, your spirit is all about that. And um, I loved spending the afternoon with you today. And we'll look Thank forward to you. I, I do, I'm going to add one more secret that I wasn't going to tell you. <laughs> okay. I actually, watch me on Bravo TV on June 8th. I actually am on Top July. Chef Amateurs. July 8th. July 8th. Oh July 8th. Yay. I, okay. I actually am one of the contestants on Top Chef Amateurs. It's their spinoff. And uh, I was holding off to tell you guys, but I had such fun. I told you every other secret. I might as well spill the beans. <laughs> but please enjoy it. It's going to be a blast. And buy some books. <laughs> buy some books. I'm not joining in with that. Lorenzo, thank you so much, really, thank thank you. for being in our kitchen. And have a I wonderful afternoon, everybody. And thank you. Please give me your sister's email. I want to know where she got that platter. Okay. I will. <laughs> will do. All right. Thank you.